very good evening and a warm welcome to Personal Finance. I am Gugule Tukele. Now today I'm joined by Stephen Nathan, the Chief Executive of 10X Investments, and he's in our studios today to give us some perspective on the uh, postponement of the retirement reforms which were recently announced by Finance Minister Pravin Gordon. What does this mean for your pocket? And as we approach the new tax year, how do you need to rebalance your finances? Stephen, thank you so much for joining us today. Such a pleasure to have you with us in studio. Let's uh, pick up on uh, the retirement reforms. There was a whole lot of uh, conversation taking place with regard to the annuitization of one's retirement, which was meant to kick in on the 1st of March this year. But I understand we've made a U-turn on that now. But uh, what does this mean going forward? So, Google, as you said, uh, there's been a lot of proposals and a lot of misunderstanding about exactly what those proposals are. So I think the easiest way is to understand uh, from 1 March, what happens and the only thing that is changing is the tax deductibility about how much is the maximum I can claim mm. tax-free if I contribute to a retirement annuity a pension or a provident fund and that's that's the only thing that's happening so prior to 1 March of 2016 the rules were all different very convoluted I can claim a certain portion of this if, if that and that's all been simplified and the jargon is harmonization so there's harmonization of tax deductibility mm -hmm. and from 1st of March 2016 any South African can claim up to 27 and a half percent of their total earnings or their total taxable income tax-free to a retirement fund being RA pension or provident but it's capped at 350,000 so Previously, we had difference from 15% upwards. Now it's 27%. Mm -hmm. But uh, previously, it was it was uncapped. So if you're a very high earner, you could conceivably put a million or two tax-free in. Whereas now, it's going to be capped at 350,000 rand per year. Mm -hmm. On the topic of the cap, though, perhaps if you can explain to us further as to what the benefits that it might have for the lower to middle income earners, and again the constraints like you've alluded to for the high income earners, and if there's a particular reason why we want to put a cap on it, um, one would think that you're encouraging retirement savings across the board as a South African government. So, is their decision uh, questionable? Yes. So, so I think if you look at it from government or treasury's perspective, what they are saying is that uh, high earners have been able to claim too much tax deductions uh, by contributing tax-free into retirement funds. So they would prefer that high earners don't claim that much tax, mm -hmm. pay more tax to the government and claim less tax-free to retirement. Obviously as industry, you know, we would say no, we like to have the the high earners because they do contribute a lot but what they do for the industry is they put more money in the savings pool mm -hmm. and that allows us to reduce costs because you've got more assets to work with mm -hmm. but treasury obviously they're looking at the tax receipts and they're saying high income earners you know that's good enough for you but what we would like treasury saying is that for lower income earners to be able to contribute more tax free should they be able to. So rather than being capped, let's say at 15% of your total salary, you can get a higher deduction. And what it means is that you pay less tax. So let's say that, uh, that I have a thousand rand of taxable income or salary, mm -hmm. and let's say that I would pay 30% tax rate on that. That thousand rand is not really worth a thousand rand to me because 300 yeah. I pay to SARS and it's worth 700 rand to me. What government is saying is that that thousand rand can be worth a thousand rand if you contribute that to your retirement fund and you actually get a thousand rand credited in your investment account rather than paying 300 rand of tax and only having 700 rand to to contribute so it's a very generous tax deduction that uh, all people will be getting but it does have more an impact on the lower income and middle income earners mm. having said that the tax uh, impact uh, that you've alluded to uh, if one does pay slightly extra whether it's by a thousand rand or fifty thousand rand then what are the tax implications or does it fall into the particular tax bracket uh, that your income or annual income would um, fall into yeah so so what you need to understand is that as a taxpayer so we all have a salary and we know more or less what our salary is so so your your salary is taxed at at different rates so, you know, the first, let's say, 150,000 Rand would be taxed at, say, 18%. Mm -hmm. And then above that, you might pay 20% and above another amount, 25 and 30. And the marginal tax rate is 41%. So very high income earners at that level, you're paying 1,000, you're paying 41% in tax. Mm. So if I can take 10,000 and uh, save that in my retirement fund, then I'm saving 41% in tax. So I'm effectively getting 41% boost. But if you're a lower income earner, then the highest tax rate you're paying 
because it's the tax on that amount that actually you're saving. So, so you save tax on the highest amount because it reduces the most expensive tax you're paying. Makes so sense. it is a great tax incentive. Mm. Having said that though, for those who are planning to sort out their retirement savings in the new uh, tax year, how best can they go about taking advantage of these tax benefits, especially in a, such a tight macroeconomic cycle where the cost mm. of living purely is just getting a bit too expensive. So mm. there isn't uh, much more left in our reserves to contribute to retirement savings. Yeah, it's, it's always a challenge for people to save in good times and bad. So we need to have a discipline that says I need to save a certain amount of my salary before I start spending. So pay yourself first and that number we believe and others believe it's close to 15% of your total uh, salary. So that's the number if you want to tick the box to say am I being a good saver, retirement saver, you should be saving 15% of your salary in good and bad times. Maybe in good times you can do a bit more, in bad times maybe you you just less than that. If you haven't done anything, start today. Don't wait until tomorrow, but gradually get up to 15% because it would be unrealistic to expect someone to go from zero to 15 in one mm. go because that's a, it's too much, you know, it's, it's too big an impact. But just remember that if you do save 15%, your, your taxable, your, your take home pay is not reduced by 15% because you get a tax break. So, so there's kind of a disproportionate impact. So it's not as bad as you may think. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is be a diligent saver. As you said, it's tough times. Doesn't mean you've got to stop saving. It's even more important to, to get now. good value for your savings. So the first tick is I'm going to get, give myself a tick if I'm a diligent saver, and that's about 15% of your of your salary. Now you want to be a a good investor because you want to invest your savings wisely. And a big component of doing that is making sure that you're not losing too much in costs. Mm -hmm. Don't pay too much in fees because fees are going to dramatically reduce your environment. And I was having a discussion earlier today with someone who said, you know, it's such a tough environment. And I was speaking to my financial services company and I asked them, what are you doing to reduce my fees? Because all businesses look at reducing fees in a difficult environment and they yeah. say we're not doing anything. And, but, but that's the right mindset is that ensure you get better value in all times, but probably more importantly in difficult times. Exactly. Uh, Stephen, I wanted to piggyback off the theme with regard to those above the age of 55, because I do understand that the annuitization element of the retirement reforms wasn't going to impact them. But with the new increase in the limits and these tax benefits, how should the different age groups be approaching uh, this particular system, especially those who are a lot closer mm -hmm. to retirement and have a, a limited time to really capitalize uh, on, on savings? Yes, yeah, so it's a... It's a it's a difficult one to give you an answer that actually is right for everyone. And the reason I say that is that uh, uh, you should save as much as you can as early as you can because mm. you benefit from compounding. Yeah. So if I can save a rand for 40 years, it's going to have a much longer or much higher value than if I save a rand for five years. Uh, also because if I've got a long time horizon, then I can afford to invest more in shares, in equities, mm -hmm. because I'm going to get better long-term returns, but I can ride out the short-term volatility or the short-term negatives. When I'm closer to retirement and I need the money, then I might not be able to invest as aggressively and I've got less time to compound, but I might be able to afford more. Mm. So the rule is always invest as much as you can for as long as you can. Mm -hmm. If you are approaching retirement, as you say, you're five or 10 years away, then the important point is to think about what am I gonna do at retirement? What am I going to do with my pension pot, my provident pot, my retirement annuity? Because nine out of 10 South Africans invest in what we call a living annuity. Mm. And that's an investment product. So you're still at age 65, you could have a 20 year time horizon, in which case you're still a long term investor because your capital needs to last for 20 years or longer. So then you should be in still investing as much as you can because you can invest as a long term investor. You can still invest for growth and you can still ride out the short term bumps. Mm. What about the criticism that often comes through, especially for those who uh, might uh, uh, have a shorter time horizon, let's say five years or so? We've seen a lot of market volatility. I'm sure pension funds as well have been uh, trying to uh, manage the waves and the cycles involved. But uh, the key questions that someone who's 55 and above, what should they be asking their financial advisor, especially um, uh, given the current market volatility and some of the value that they have might have lost in the last few months? So the, the key issue is to say, what am I going to do when I retire? Yeah. What am I going to do at age 65? Because the way you manage your money in the last five years or the last 10 years depends on that critical question. So if I'm going to invest in what we call a guaranteed annuity, which is an investment product, I'm going to take my pot and I'm going to hand it over to an insurance company and in return they're going to pay me an annuity. Mm. Then you don't want to risk the 
uh, capital loss because the capital you hand over, if you have a 10 or 20% loss, sure. it's a permanent loss. Whereas if you're investing in a living annuity, which as I said, nine out of 10 people are doing, then a capital loss, it's an unrealized loss. The markets go down a little bit, but what we've seen over more than 100 years is that they always go up over, over the long run, over five years and longer. So it's really important. The first thing is to understand what am I doing at retirement? What's my time horizon? Because if your time horizon is five years and longer, you should be sitting in a high equity balanced fund because you can write out write out the short term bumps. Mm -hmm. The second thing is our emotions is to say, okay, well, I know the logic, but how am I going to feel when I'm watching CNBC and someone tells me to panic because they panic and I sell my portfolio. Yeah. So that's very important is the, you know, is your emotional behavior. Can you stomach that? Riding out the wave in volatile times. Well, Stephen, we've certainly said quite a bit, but let's uh, get a quick recap of some of the key takeaways from tonight's discussion. Stephen, back to you to give us just a, uh, a summary of uh, the key things to uh, identify when it comes to uh, these retirement reforms as well as uh, the increase in the tax benefits. How should we be approaching our retirement savings for the 2016 year? So the, the first point is that South Africa offers a very attractive retirement saving regime. Despite all the negative criticism around what government is or isn't doing, whatever government has done has actually been tax friendly and has been to the benefit of long term savers. Mm -hmm. So we have a really uh, very good tax incentivized retirement savings environment. So make sure you maximize your tax free contributions. That's the first step. The second is don't do anything that prejudices that. So if you invest badly or you pay too high fees, you're going to eliminate the tax benefits. So invest sensibly, invest according to your time horizon, write out the short term blips, focus on what your pot's going to be at retirement and in retirement rather than next week or next quarter. Because if you make short term decisions, you're going to make lousy long term decisions. And third is minimize fees. The thing yeah. you can control the most is fees. Most people have got no idea what fees they're paying. They have no idea that they can negotiate fees. You can? You can, there you go. So, so negotiate fees. If you say to your provider or your advisor or whoever else it might be, what's the best deal you can give me? Because if you don't give me a good deal, I'm gonna go into the marketplace. And you'd be amazed at how quickly they come back to you with a fee reduction that they otherwise would not have mentioned. Mm. And go into the marketplace and benchmark. We, we, we price compare everything. We price compare cell phones, we price compare iPads. Price compare your retirement fund because it's likely to be the biggest investment you ever make. So true. Stephen, thank you so much for the sound and solid advice and even teaching me a thing or two that you can negotiate the fees around your retirement savings. But that's where we leave it for personal finance tonight. A big thank you once more to Stephen Nathan, the Chief Executive of 10X Investments for joining us tonight. Remember that we'd love to hear from you and tell us if our insights have been helpful to you and your pocket. You can tweet us at CNBC Africa using the hashtag finance410 or to myself at Gukum Fupi. Until next time, we wish you a wonderful evening.